Um, do you think it was just a mistake then? Or is it just a question? You think it's wrong? Okay. Where's 2e at? x, u, v. All right. So where's x, u, and v? So it's a big one. Right, x, u, v. So that's the big arc, it's a major arc, and it should be a 90, not 90, 180 plus a 94. So I see a 266. I know that's not right. So what is 180 plus 94? 274. 274? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I know it's not that, 266. So 274. Okay, so it should be that. I don't know what I was doing off that one. 274, you said? Yeah. Okay. So 274 off of there. Try to learn stick on there. Okay, any other questions you got? Julian? Seven. Seven? Sure. Let's take a look at seven. Is it there? Cool. All right, um, on seven. Nope. Oh, all right, there we go. Uh, seven. First off, that one and three. Punching out to be 90. That goes right back to what we did yesterday with the quadrilaterals. Um, with that quadrilateral, that square that we had worked with. Again, that silent diameter. With that diameter there, as we did with the square yesterday, that cuts us into semicircles, doesn't it? And again, with those semicircles, we get 180 degrees. And at that 180 degrees, then tracing that back, angle three then is an inscribed angle. Inscribed angles are half of that uh, 180, right? And half of 180 is, there's where that 90 is coming from. And that angle one does the same thing. That angle one is part of that semicircle. So half of that semicircle is that right there. Again, I can't stress that to you enough, and it comes just from practice. I've been doing that, been doing the circles for, for decades at this point. Wow. All right, so it just comes from years of practice. But looking at those diameters, those silent diameters, <coughs> those semicircles. Then for the other two, all right, not so much the semicircles, but seeing angle four, tracing that back out. I like to sketch out things, tracing things out. Four is going to this arc. We know four is an inscribed angle. It's half of something, half of what? I traced it out to that arc. It's half of 60 and 80 together. What is 60 and 80 together? 140, right? So that 60 and 180, sorry, 60 and 80 is making about 40, and half of 140, that's that arc, half of 140 takes me to 70. Okay. Now lastly, how we get an angle two. Kind of the same idea. Angle two traces me back to that angle, that arc right there. Angle two is another inscribed angle. But I got nothing on this arc. Okay. That's a major arc right there. But I do have, if I look at this red and blue arcs that I've highlighted, 360 total. I've identified 140 here. How much remains out of 360? 220. So that blue arc, 220, half of 220 takes me to that 110. Okay? That's not the only way to do it. There's a few other ways to get there. But uh, those tend to be kind of the common ways to find those out. Okay? But those 90 degrees, those semicircles from the diameters, those are the ones I really want you to kind of keep an eye out on. Okay. All right, keep going. What else we got there? Yes, Spencer? Six. Six. All right, let's take a look at number six right there. Back to our circles again. And as we look at number six there, back to our circles, we get ourselves an arc and an angle, but it's not just any an angle. You gotta know if it's a central and inscribed. And that angle R is an inscribed angle because it's sitting on the circle. Now, it's more than what we just did on the last one because we do have a bit of an expression there to create an equation. That 9x plus 11, that 3x plus 25, knowing what that relationship is, that whatever this is, if we take half of that, that gets us to 3x plus 25. Or if we double this, if we double that, that takes us out to 9x plus 11. 
either way that you see it, it gets us the same answer. So for myself, what I did was I doubled that. That takes me up to 9x plus 11. So I doubled 3x plus 25, taking double the inscribed angle. That gets me to 9x plus 11. So there's my equation. And then you guys should be able to solve equations like anything. The other way to write this one up is taking half of the arc. That's going to get you the inscribed angle. Now, either way is going to get you to the answer. I don't care. The only reason why I like to do the double is I just fraction it. I ignore the fraction. Okay? So, I'm going to end up with some fractions here, or I could just double it out, whatever you want to do. All right? Solve it out. Hopefully, x is 13. Okay? There's nobody else pointed it out. For that. So, I'm assuming x is 13. All right. Anything else anybody's got? Do more work with it. Again, I don't expect you to have these completely mastered yet on the circles. There's a work in progress. Okay, the usual. Before you tune it in, make sure your name's on it. Okay. Doing here, or what we're doing here is really looking at the interior part of the, the uh, square, the quadrilaterals, diagonals. Three things are happening with the diagonals, and what that's what we're looking at um, with the quadrilaterals still here today. So. We want to take a look to see if all three things are happening or only bits and pieces of those diagonals are happening. So yesterday on that square that we did on 217, we said all three things happen on the square. We said one thing was that they what? Bisected. Um, you, you don't need to write this down. We just summarized real quick. We said they bisected each other. We said that QR and we had VW like this, I believe, to make that square. And then what else do we had? We said QR was congruent, I think, to VW. That's the one other thing. And the last thing we had said was they were perpendicular, right? Those are the three things that we typically look at for quadrilateral. With those three things, the square does them all. That's the only one that really does them all. Okay. After that, um, we're going to see now through the other quadrilaterals, they do bits and pieces. But the square is like the magic one that does everything. Because as we talked about that kind of flow chart, that family tree, everything kind of what flows down to a square, right? So the square gets everything. But then everything else about it gets bits and pieces of it, right? So we're going to take a look at the other quadrilaterals uh, today, maybe tomorrow as well, that only get bits and pieces of it. So let's go to the next page. I'm at 218 and see which one we're going to do here today and what diagonal properties are going to end up resulting from there, okay? So let's kind of do the same thing here. Let's see what we got going here. All right, what we want to do here is Construct the perpendicular bisector like we did yesterday with our patty paper. So what did we do yesterday to construct that perpendicular bisector? We took that patty paper, threw it on top of our circle, right? And we traced on that patty paper QR. So trace on to that patty paper QR. And oh, it might be the same, uh, same segment from yesterday, right? It might be the exact same, same one. And as we trace that on there, yesterday we said to bisect that, cut that in half. Uh, I think Zariah said just fold it, fold Q on top of R. And when you fold Q on top of R, that's actually doing two things. One, it's bisecting, it's cutting QR in half. And the second thing is, it's creating our perpendicular segment to QR. The crease in that paper is creating that perpendicular segment. So with that in mind, which I think I threw away my, oops, I get right here. Nope, I did not. I'm lying. I guess I threw it away. All right. What you then got going here is if you put your patty paper back on, fold it, all right, right here, Q is landing on top of P then, right? Or sorry, your folded paper, QP here, and I'm just going to freehand it, but your crease should be landing right there on top of P. 
And that is now what we call our perpendicular bisector, right? Now, with that, that's what we did yesterday with the square, but that's not what we're going to continue to trace out here on, okay? Because we already did a square yesterday. What we want to now do here is, all right, we're going to draw in another diameter. It says in such a way, though, that it's not perpendicular or coincident to QR. What do they mean by your word coincident? Coincident means it's not on top of that, what we just drew. So now take your uh, straight edge, okay? And we just want to make a diameter such that um, it's not on top of that perpendicular. So just so we're maybe all on the same page, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate the diameter here and draw it like this. So I'm going to draw a diameter like this. Get rid of those markings I just made. So you can take your straight edge, line it up, and make a diameter like that. Okay. So we want to create a diameter that's not coincident to that perpendicular one we made. And we're going to name that one, so we're going to name that ST. Okay. And now let's go ahead and connect it to make the shape. So we're going to connect Q to S, S to R, R to T, and Q to T. Now, we don't go based off of just looks, but that does kind of help us narrow down of maybe what shape we're almost kind of looking at. What kind of shape are we maybe kind of almost looking at here? I'm sorry? Maybe a rectangle seems to be maybe our one of our better ones, right? Now we can't say it's a rectangle quite yet. We need to, like we did yesterday in our square, kind of prove it out. How can we maybe go about proving this out as a uh, as a um, rectangle or a square like we did yesterday? Okay. So let's go through here. Let's try to do our best to list out some things that are happening. And see again too. What we want to really do is see about what's going on with these diagonals of this particular quadrilateral. Okay. So let's go in and do this. All right. Let's go look at these angles. Angles are a nice one to kind of look at. Let's look at that angle S up there. Just like we did on the homework a few minutes ago, and as we're doing right now. Go look at that angle S. All right. Here's that angle S right here. What is angle S? going back to, somebody's just said it, yeah. it's going back to QR, which is a diameter, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to draw this in your book, I will draw it up here, but angle S is going back to a diameter, isn't it? When it goes back to a diameter, I want you to keep thinking about those semicircles, angle S is an inscribed angle, and half of an inscribed, sorry, half of a semicircle is, so we just got ourselves a right angle, didn't we? Now we are thinking that this looks like a rectangle, and that if this is truly a rectangle, what else do we have for the other three angles? So let's go check, make sure we get right angles here. If we go to angle T, which is this S is opposite, right? Does that go to QR as well? Mm -hmm. It does seem to go to QR. There it is. That's the diameter. Boom. 180. Half of 180 is angle T. That's good. Okay, what is angle R going to? Angle R goes to, does that go to a diameter? Yep, ST, which is a diameter. So we got R is going to ST, that's a diameter, and half of 180, sorry, half of, yeah, that's right, half of 180 is 90. And Q does the same thing, doesn't it? So, so far so good. And yeah, we got ourselves almost a rectangle going here. So off of that, I think we just identified something down here. Let us see, we just did, didn't we? Determine the measure of each interior angle. We just did that, right? All are right angles. And we did that by using our inscribed angles of semicircles. Okay? That's a really crazy event. Okay. 
give you a second there. Now, the next thing here is, let's go back to those uh, diagonals, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's look at the diagonals here. Again, this is going to be messy. You don't necessarily have to mark up in your picture because it's already probably messy enough. Our diagonals are QR and ST. The diagonals of this rectangle are QR and ST. Those are our diagonals up there. So what can we say about these diagonals? Okay. Well, what's one thing we can say about the diagonals, anybody? If you look at that picture, what's true about these diagonals? QR and ST. What's true about them? The square did everything yesterday. If I go back to my square, are all three of these things happening? What's one of the things that are happening right now in our rectangle? They are congruent, aren't they? QR and ST are definitely the uh, same length, aren't they? They're both the diameter of the circle, aren't they? So therefore, diameters are congruent. So we can definitely say that QR is congruent to ST. We've got that happening, don't we? Okay. And then <clears throat> what else can we possibly say here? So trying to mark that up is annoying, but there's one other thing that's happening here too. They are also, let me go back to this other one, they're also bisecting one another. And the reason why they're bisect, you go ahead, Katie, you don't have to wait on me. They're also bisecting one another, okay? Because what do we have here? They're meeting at the, the center, right? And as they're meeting at that center of that circle, when we meet at the center of the circle, the diameters become what? Radii, right? Radii. When we get these diameters all meeting at the center, what we have then is congruent radii. And let me make sure I mark these correctly. What we end up with then is congruent radii right there. So what that implies then is those diagonals are bisecting one another. So what we have then is uh, bisected each other. Bisected each other. We've got that going for ourselves in this quadrilateral. The only thing that's not happening is the last, the other one, where they were perpendicular to one another. And as we drew this out, and we started off with that perpendicular bisector, we can see right here, we're not using that perpendicular bisector. When we rotated that ST and made that, we're not using that perpendicular bisector. So if I zone in on QR and ST, they're not perpendicular to one another. So this shape right here is only getting those two diagonals at the moment. Okay. Now, off of that, what we have going here now is, okay, um, to match up the sides to just make it a tri not triangle, uh, a rectangle. But what we're coming out to is using our we're going to use our side angle side one more time. It's messy. But let's use our vertical angles right there. By using those vertical angles, and I'm going to redraw that triangle off to the side here. Okay, boom, boom, and boom. SAS right there. Okay. What we have here is side angle side happening. What this does for us now is these two triangles are congruent to one another. This side here is congruent to that opposite side there, isn't that? Okay, those two triangles are congruent to one another, therefore the corresponding parts are congruent to one another. We've got these two things equal to another, vertical angles are congruent. We said these bisected one another, so all these four radii are congruent, cool. And therefore, by SAS, these two sides are congruent to another of the triangle. That gives us that, and then the exact same thing happens. Run out of colors. Here. 
This is a different triangle, okay, where we have these two triangles congruent to one another as well. So if I go and do that same thing right here, I get another one, two, three. I get this one now. And I gave it three markings because this is a rectangle, as you were telling me, it looked like a rectangle. And then this rectangle, these are not congruent to those, are they? And we already had these diagonals, which are not the same either. There's a lot of marks going on. Again, that's happening by SAS. We had these sides and angles and sides mark, which matches up over here to SAS. So what do we finally have? We have ourselves um, by SAS, we can say that. Okay, we had that SAS marked up there by SAS. And what do we say we finally have? We have ourselves a rectangle. Now, if we get ourselves a rectangle, let's take it back to yesterday when we named out our family tree. What else can we say for a rectangle? For a rectangle, what else are we? For a trapezoid, but before a trapezoid, we are a parallelogram. Okay? And then after a parallelogram, we are a trapezoid. And then after a trapezoid, we are for sure a, duh, we are quadrilateral. Okay. If I could spell quadrilateral, which does not seem to be happening. Okay. So I know parallelogram and trapezoid are there, but it goes quad, trapezoid, and then parallelogram. At least one pair of parallel sides, so in that particular order. Okay. What I really want us to take away from today is looking at those diagonals. Are those diagonals happening? Okay. What's happening, I should say, on those diagonals? Square gets them all. After that, it just depends on what's there. Okay, let's look at the next group, next circle. On that next circle, what do we have on the next circle? We don't have one big circle, do we? On the next circle, we have what we say is concentric. You guys have seen concentric circles before, think of a bullseye. All concentric circles are, are two circles that share the same center. That's all it is, that's a bullseye, okay? So concentric circles, all right? Now, we want to do the same thing here, start this thing off. We want to construct the perpendicular bisector uh, to BC through point A of the two concentric circles. So take your patty paper. BC, so I'm not sure if it's QR. Trace onto your patty paper segment BC Fold it on top of one another. Fold B on top of C. Fold it in half, bisect it. And once you get that folded on to itself, go put that crease, nice crisp crease on there. Put it back onto your paper now. And when you put that on there, put B back, put the paper on top of B. Where should that cr uh, crease be on your notes? It should be right there, pretty much smack dab in the middle close to the middle, right? And then draw it through both circles. Okay? Mine's not stellar because I'm freehanding it. Yours should be a little bit better than mine. Is it going to be perfect? No. But it should be a little bit better than mine. And as you take a step back, it should be roughly, again, right through the center of both of those. Okay? And it's the perpendicular bisector. So what do we mean by that? That means <clears throat> we have ourselves a perpendicular segment now. So let's put that right angle there. Give you all a second on that. And just like we did earlier, we're going to create a, a segment here that's not coincident. And we're going to call that segment DE. But they say draw DE only on the inner circle. So on the inner circle, that's not coincident. So just like we did that a second ago, take your straight edge. Again, so we all on the same page. It doesn't really matter how you draw that DE on there on the inner circle. I'm going to go that same orientation I did a second ago right there. And I had D here 
and I had E right there. Okay? So I've got that right there. And by doing that, okay, we can now connect it to create some type of quadrilateral. So let's connect that those points B to D, D to C, C to E, and B to E. Let's take a step back and what do you think we get maybe as a quadrilateral we're looking at here? Talked about a square, doesn't look like a square. Talked about a rectangle, that doesn't look like a rectangle. What does it appear maybe to be? Maybe a rhombus, or maybe a parallelogram. Rhombus is a special type of parallelogram. The only difference is between the two, rhombus would have all four sides equal, right? Okay, so let's take a look here if we can determine the difference between the two of those. So B, C, and D, E, again, these are our two diagonals. Okay, those are our two diagonals in this one. Now let's go through, let's try to knock this one out here, and that'll probably be the last one we kind of wrap up here today with. Okay, three things are true about that, could be true about the diagonals. Do they bisect one another? Um, are they congruent, and are they perpendicular to one another? Those are three things I want you to keep an eye on. Now, are they doing one of those three things? I heard, bi I heard bisecting from Eva. That is happening. They're both intersecting at that center, aren't they? They're both intersecting at A. Now, as we see, DE is being cut in half as BC comes in, right? They're bisecting one another, and DE is cutting the bigger one in half, um, which is BC. Are they equal to one another? No, because clearly BC is larger than um, DE, right? But they do cut each other in half. So we're saying they do bisect each other. They're diameters of two different circles, right? And because of that, what does that imply about their lengths? Are they the same length then? No. They're diameters of two different circles. So we can't say that BC is congruent to DE, are they? They're clearly two different circle diameters. They're not the same. Are they uh, perpendicular to one another? No, we are not using that perpendicular bisector. We made it right here. They're not perpendicular. All right, that's it. That's all we can say about the three diagonal, about the three possibilities for the diagonals. All they're doing is bisecting one another. All right, that's all we got. Now, alpha here, we've drawn those in. On our interior angles, I'm trying to think if they're asking us to do anything off those. Because the other thing about that is uh, we can't go about measuring how I'm phrase. We're measuring those out, but they're not on the same circles, are they? So what I'm trying to say here is if I look at this angle C, it goes to a a diameter, but it's not at the same circle, is it? So we can't say that like, this is an inscribed angle because it's not on the same circle. And the same thing for angle D. So we're not using our inscribed angles off of that. All right. So because of that, um, the biggest thing, the best thing we could do is use our protractor and have you measure things out. I'm not going to worry about that with you. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of state this out there for you. That, um, can I do that with you? Let me just think here if I can have you do that. Uh, I'll just tell you here. Okay, so we're going to say this that uh, angle D is going to be congruent to angle E. Okay, so angle D and angle E are opposite, and angle B is congruent to angle C. They are opposite to one another. So in these, if you were to get our protractors and measure these out, which is a bit of a pain, what we say in a, this shape is that opposite angles are congruent. Okay? The 
best we can say is that the opposite angles are congruent. D is congruent to E, B is congruent to C. Okay? So that's going to be the best we're going to be able to say off that. They're not going to be necessarily, they're not going to be 90 or anything like that. Now, if you were to go and measure out the lengths of BD and EC, what would you find about the lengths of BD and EC on that? They're going to be congruent, right? They're going to be congruent. BD is congruent to EC. That is correct. And there's going to be one other thing that's going to be happening with BD and EC. Anybody else think about what's happening with BD and EC? What's one other thing that's happening with BD and EC? They're congruent, and what's the other thing you think? They're going to be parallel, right? So BD and EC, there are two things happening with that. They are congruent, and BD is parallel. EC as well. So those two things are happening, those pairs opposite sides. Now, the other thing is happening. What about the last one here? Uh, DC and what's the other side? BE. Look at the other opposite sides. DC and BE. What do you think is happening with DC and BE? DC and BE. Same thing. Yep. Congruent and also parallel. And when we bring those two things in, what we actually have here then is, which for some reason they don't have that on this page, I don't know why. What type of shape do we have here? Let's put some space off to the side. We have ourselves a, yep, parallelogram. Right. I don't know why they don't have a question for that. So what we have then is correct, a parallelogram. And for a parallelogram, what else are we? And for a trapezoid, we are for sure a quadrilateral. Okay. So right here. And really, this last, this first one on the diagonals bisect one another. If we know that diagonals bisect one another, we know it's got to be a, what you call it, a parallelogram. Okay. All right. That's where we're going to pause things. We'll leave it at that. And.